Well, shout out to my man, Coach Steve, for that. He just gave me the, like, my father instilled everything in me, like confidence-wise, whatever, but he just was like, the floor is yours. Like, whatever you do, I'm living or dying with it. And once we had that understanding, my game went from here to just Dude. took off. Just touched down, back on road. Counting money, man, you know how it goes. Hit the VIP and tell my bitch to strike a pose. Hop in mode. Hop in mode. I appreciate you taking the time out your day, for real, bro. I know you got the fan. Coming to the Barcode Podcast. Sure, I'm honored brother. to be here, brother. Honored oh, to be here. Yes, sir. Sure. For sure. You know what time it is. Yeah, yeah. I would. <laughs> you know what time it is. I would, where was we at? What was he on seventieth and whatever hooping? Middle of my, middle of my college season, we we in the in the gym at eight pm. Got runs till eleven. <laughs> get it in, get it in. Get it. Good games too. Good run. Yeah, for Great sure. Run. For no, sure, for sure, bro. Cracking, bro. I man, I remember the first first time I met you. Do you remember though? Where did I meet you at? Was it at the King Center? No. Was it at the King? Nope. Who was it at? You don't remember? I'm gonna give you one more try. Parkland. Right. Right. I do. Okay. Okay. It's coming back to me. Okay. Yeah. So, so this is when I was back actively hooping, though. Yeah, I know. You know I was a little bit in shape, and you know, Slim, I would play strong, like ah, got the brain, yeah, plenty yeah. aggression with it. <laughs> plenty aggression. So we playing against Bobbish now. Shout out to Bobbish. You know what right, I'm saying? That's my dog. Man. Shout out to my dog for sure. Yeah, that's my dog. So we played against Bobbish. I remember Bobbish coming over to me half court like, all right, Q, man. I got my boy Jamil, man. Uh, right. he, Racine, bro. Take it easy on him, bro. He in his college. You know what I'm saying? Right, 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 right. I just remember it was going, we was going at it, dog. Mm -hmm. and, and it's and I'm a piggyback on what you said. This, you was tall as hell to me back. You still tall. For sure, but back yeah, then yeah. you was tall as hell. So for, sure. for you to put it on the ground, shooting right. threes, right? Okay, this motherfucker like that. You know right. what I'm saying? <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, I mean that 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 used to always catch a lot of people off guard. And you know, I, I can't thank nobody but my pops because my pops started early with me. Cause my pops was tall and athletic, same as me, but they stuck my pops under the bucket. My pops didn't like it. So he was like, so he all, he made a promise to himself. This is what he always told me. Like, yo, if I have a son, I'm going to teach him how to dribble and shoot like a guard. So they can't just stick him under the bucket and make him play the way they want him to play. Like I want him to play. So from a young age, man, my pops he used to do all this, tie my hand behind my back, make me shoot over. Uh, he used to have a co rack. My dad, so the King Center in Racine, my dad uh, was the director of it. So we were going there late nights. He'll pull out the little tin coat rack, put a trash can on top of it. And I had to shoot over it. I'm shooting threes, I'm shooting pull-ups, I'm doing all stuff. I gotta go through the coat rack when I'm doing my cone drills and stuff. I'm going, so I gotta get small to get through the coat rack and stuff. So uh, I, I, I owe all of that to him. Cause even now, like when people have played or people see me play or whatever, I had my stint in the league as a stretch four. So when everybody see me or think now, they're like, oh, he just shoot the ball. But when I put it on the floor or I go into my mid-range game or something like that, they, they're confused, like, or it takes them back, like, oh, I didn't know you had all that. And I'm like, you, I said, that's why sometimes I think the game is flawed these days. Because yeah. you can only, you only see highlights or you only hear what's what. It's the whole argument they go with dudes like the 14, 15 man on any NBA team can come to any gym and look like LeBron. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Because, mm -hmm. yeah, he on the roster for that or he does that or whatever. But he got a whole game outside of that. But in that league or whatever role you in, you paid to do that and nothing else. You know what I'm saying? So you don't get the full experience of it. But. But no, it, it still catch people off guard. I mean, I was just playing in Puerto Rico. I was just playing in Puerto Rico this summer. And I caught it. Uh, first couple of weeks, I caught some dudes off guard. And they was like, what the fuck? Yeah, <laughs> they was like, this our four? I'm like, it is what it is, man. Yeah, but people don't even know that you a great defender. You a great shot blocker. Yeah. B-bomb. And yeah. you're up, man. 
Yeah, like, so, yeah that, that's the thing. Like, I've, so my dad was a, a, a big time defender at, at Whitewater. He won a national championship and shit. Shout out to my pops. Wow. Uh, but uh, my dad was a hell of a defender. Like I used to watch the old VHSs of my pops blocking shots into the fifth, 10th row, all type of stuff, like crazy vertical and stuff. He tore his leg up so he never got to pursue his professional aspirations or whatever. But all of that defensive, so my dad, like I said, they stuck him under the bucket. You know what I'm saying? So all of that defensive minded stuff he had, he still gave me that, but he just was like, look, we're gonna sprinkle a little bit this on top and see what it do. Uh, and it just panned out to be the way I, I am, but I've always taken pride right, on defense, especially because I ain't brawn, bro. I ain't 6'9", 260 or nothing like that, bro. I'm 6'9", 225 on a good day. You know what I'm, I'm skinny, bro. <laughs> Yeah, and people look at me and they're like, oh, they think it's sweet or something. Like, like I take pride still in that, like somebody thinking it's sweet to score on me. You know what I'm saying? So I love blocking shots and you know what I'm saying? I like picking a nigga pocket, all that, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like that that's the part of the game that I think is really underappreciated still to this day. But yeah, hey, man, I'm all, until I hang it up or I, I'm just out there and I'm sweet beat, you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm gonna keep, you know, doing what I'm doing on the defensive end, at least try to, but yeah. Um, but even since I was a shorty, man, the, the thing I took pride in most is just versatility on both sides of the floor. Be able to guard multiple positions, be able to play multiple position, have your IQ where you know who's supposed to be where and et cetera, et cetera. So, like I said, man, it's all a testament to my pops and what, you know, he instilled in me as a youngin. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man, no doubt. And y'all originally born, I mean, you was originally born and raised in Wisconsin, right? I was born in Milwaukee. So a lot, a lot of people don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was born in Milwaukee. You know what I'm saying? I was born in Milwaukee, uh, Wisconsin. And then I think when we were, when I was like two, maybe, we moved to Racine for a minute. And then my dad's people is from Jamaica. So we had our little stint over there and whatever and, and, and whatnot, or his people moved over here and whatever. But I was, I was born in Milwaukee. My mom is from Milwaukee. Oh. My mom, yeah, my mom went to Rufus King. Come so on, man, you know I went to Vincent now. Come on, I, I know, I know, Come on, man. I know, you I know. Your king, bro. Nah, my, my, my mom's went to King, and this is the crazy thing. This is the crazy thing about it because I almost ran into you in high school because right before I was going into high school, they was about to cut the sports in Racine. We didn't have enough money. I don't know if you remember that. They was about to cut all like the sports in certain whatever. So they was about to cut the sports. I was about to move with my grandma and go to King. Hold on, you know, I'm not all. I was either gonna go. I was either gonna go to King because my mom went to King, or I was gonna go to Pius. Ooh we. Hold on, now hold on, Jamil. You know, I'm I'm an OG. I graduated oh five. What what year? What year? Uh, that was my first year of high school. Oh five. Oh shit. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you would have went to King, we would have had to rough you up, dog. Come on, man. It wouldn't have been sweet, but you know what I'm saying? We would have done our fair share of roughing each other up. <laughs> For sure. But no, I uh, I was probably like a two-week decision away from going to King or Pius. Man, that's dope. That would have yeah. been dope, bro. That Crazy. Been dope, so. But I so, mean, yeah. at that point, I was spending most of my summers in Milwaukee anyway, because I was with B and them. I was with the running Rebels. Yeah. So I already had, Johnny was trying to get me to go to Bayview and all. I'm like, man. You know what I'm saying? Him and Bikes was over there. Yeah, so it would. That would have been a whip. <laughs> that would have yeah, been a whip. Yes, but I mean, it came through when we had sports, so I ended up saying, but yeah, I was like two weeks away from jumping ship and going to Milwaukee. Man, okay, yeah, that's that's dope. That would have been a nice thing to see. So sure. you stay in race, so you stayed in racing, go to racing Warlick. Right. All right, so y'all have sports now. Yep. Did you play varsity out gate your freshman year or you got so, to work your way up? I mean, obviously now the youngins now have a whole different type of buzz. So you know who's what, what. But, you know, I had a buzz going in to high school. You know what I'm saying? But the coach that was there was like, uh, now I'm gonna make him earn it. He gonna start on the freshman floor first. So I started in the back of the bleachers on the little clay track floor. I was there for like a day during tryouts. Then he moved to me to the JV, which was right across from varsity, kind of the same. Mm -hmm. And I 
he just stuck me at JV. He was like, all right, like I see it, but I'm not moving you up to varsity. You're going to play on JV your freshman year. Me, I'm like, all right, whatever. You know what I'm saying? I still think I'm that dude. Like, mm -hmm. I'm that guy. Like, I need to be on varsity. But I ain't tripping. You know what I'm saying? All right, earn your stripes kind of thing. So the day before the first game, one senior gets caught doing something. I think a drunk a guy, like a ticket drunk, like got a ticket or the party he was drinking, got a ticket. So the, the coach sat him down for like a couple games. He called me up that game, rest was history. And this is when you were a freshman. Freshman, yeah. It was like the day before the game. He called me out of like my third period, the day of the game or something like that. Called me out of like my third period. I went and talked to him. He's like, all right, you can suit up for JV, but you probably won't play. Like, oh. what? what you mean I'm not going to play? Like, it's me. Like, what, what are you talking about? I'm the guy on this team. Like, this. And he was like, so, so and so got a, 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 a violation of ticket or whatever. So I'm going to send him the first three games. We're going to call you up to play. All right, cool. I went up there, started. Started. Started right away. Didn't look back. Didn't look back. Nope. Didn't look back. So, it, and then it went from him kind of trying to go a different way with the offense and how he wanted to play to uh, by mid season, it was, I was the center of it. And yeah. Then went from there. We just built from there. Yeah. Yeah. And the position you play when you was a freshman, did he stick you under the rim or this is when stretch force was? This was, this was when like he, to be honest with you. So we had, a, we had, a, we had two good point guards, Andy Cohill, Daryl Clark. We had a, we had two good wings, Marcus Ward, David, Lo, David Lojeski. So that was like our two and a three. So I played the four and then we had a five man, I forget his name, I'm trying to, trying to think. But we had a five, so I was like the four. So I, so he pretty much just let me rock out at the four. You know what I'm saying? And then it was good for me because anything that happened or whatever, he was like, oh, like freshman mistake, whatever. You know what I'm saying? So I'm trying to experiment and do stuff. And if something goes wrong, he's like, oh, freshman, whatever. You know what I'm saying? He's not tripping and spazzing out on me. So that gave me a lot of room to grow and a ton of confidence. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm like, what? I just turned it over and then missed a crazy shot. I ain't get pulled. All right, cool. Like I, I can do this. I, I, can, I can figure this out. So, mm -hmm. so shout out to my man, Coach T, for that. He just gave me the, like, my father instilled everything in me, like, confidence-wise or whatever, but he just was like, the floor is yours. Like, whatever you do, I'm living or dying with it. And once we had that understanding, my game went from here to just to, took off, yes. took off, because because at that point, is it, they they say the most dangerous player on the floor is the one with the ultra green light. Can't do no wrong. I agree. Yep, you, you can't do no wrong. Yeah. So when when that ultra green came, I'm like, I'm trying this. I want to try this. I'm gonna do this. <laughs> so that freedom and leeways for me to be myself allowed me to figure out that oh, I can't dribble the ball. I can get past guards. I can post up leagues. I can guard there. I can do this. So, so yeah, that that freshman year gave me a lot of, gave me a big jump in confidence. And then, I, like I said, I never looked back, bro. I just was like, you're going to run with it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I know you didn't look back because just, just, and I don't mean to skip over your sophomore year, but, man, your junior year. Oh, man, yeah, my junior year was crazy. Dominating. Let we me, lost, I actually lost. wrote that down, Jamil. Your <laughs> junior year, you averaged. 18, well, you know what? I ain't going to take away your 18.3. You averaged 18.3 and 9.4 rebounds. Yeah. You know, back then, man, like yeah. scoring 18, especially the other players that you had on sure. your team. Right, they right. Probably, we got some other dudes man. on my team, for sure. Mm -hmm. It's crazy, but no, nah, I think, I mean, my my freshman year to my sophomore year, I, I took a leap. But my sophomore year to my junior year, I took a bound, like I, I jumped tremendously. I was on the circuit. I was ranked top in the country. So like other dudes was like running at me. Like I walk in the gym, yo, that's Jamil Wilson. He got offers from here, this, that. So 
Now the thing that I used to do with Lacey, me and Johnny, we used to walk in the gym, AU circuits and be like, yo, that's so-and-so from Oklahoma's finest. That's so-and-so from the Gauchos. That's so-and-so from Houston, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Indiana elite. Like when we see them, we popping them. Now it's reversed. Oh, um, Jamil Wilson, this, that, Johnny Lacey, Luke Russell, the oldest you. And this, when we see them, we popping them. Yeah. So now it's coming at us. So that really, so that sophomore summer sharpened everything. You know what I'm saying? That, that mm -hmm. gave me whatever. And not to mention that summer, I went through a traumatic experience with my family. We lost my mom and everything. So I kind of used that as a motivational thing, like a pain fuel. And then you thinking you using this and then everybody's still hunting you. So it was just like, it added everything. So it was just like everything mixed together. And I was just running at everything. I, from that point, I was just running at everything, especially my junior year, because I felt like I had a lot to prove. I lost, I was in a crazy space mentally. I lost my mom. So I was just on like a tear, like basketball was my outlet to let out however I was feeling that day. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that sophomore to that junior year was a, a big, big bound for me. You know what I'm saying? It was crazy. I think I might actually got an all state that year. And I think we lost two games. Two games that year. Yeah. No, games. I think it was 24 and two that year. 24 and two. You hit on the head. You took it out yeah. with the you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, you don't forget nothing like that. You know yeah. What I'm saying? No, you don't. You don't. Yeah. So, yeah, man. Uh, well, rest in peace to your mom. Uh, sure. I sure. didn't know that you lost your mom. And yeah. especially at a time like that, I know it was difficult. But the sure. good thing is you stayed focused. Yeah. You know, and it led you to get, you know, full scholarship. So, sure, and, sure. you know, and to play professional and make, you know, make a lot of money. You always been a humble, good dude, man. That's yeah, why man. I appreciate you coming for on the sure, show. For, for sure. Real, yeah, no, for sure, man. It, mm -hmm. I, I just, you know, I, my mom and pops raised me, you know, I'm grateful for that. You know, everybody isn't guaranteed a two parent, you know, household. But, you know, I was, I was, my dad was my coach. My mom was my teacher. She was my nurturer. And my dad was my, you know what I'm saying? Kind of like my protector and like dictator. Like, this is how you do things as a man, whatever, whatever. And my mom was just a nurturer. You know, you ain't better than nobody else, no matter what you got, what you don't have. Ain't nobody better than you, no matter what they got, what they don't have. So, you know, so, mm -hmm. so I try to, I've always tried to live by that, regardless of, you know what I'm saying? What someone's driving, what I'm driving, what I got in my pocket, what they don't, you know what I'm saying? I've always tried to be humble about something because you never know when you'll need somebody, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Or you'll never know when a table will turn for somebody. You can treat somebody bad one day, two years later, they on Forbes. You trying to link up with them now and the only thing they got from you is the bad taste you left in their mouth two years ago. They ain't linking up with you, you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I've always tried to be level-headed and you know what I'm saying? You know, give love, show love to everybody because you know what I'm saying? And I ain't got no hate in my heart, really. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I, I ain't got no hate in my heart, bro. I, I show too much love. It's too much love out here, bro. It's too it's too much life to live to be yeah. out here holding a grudge, hating another person. Yeah, exactly. A lot of love. So, so you were ranked third. You is top one hundred ESPN, but you landed at thirty one. Was that your junior or senior year? That was my senior year. The highest I got was my sophomore year. Soft, after my sophomore summer, I got to six in the country overall and, th and three in my position. Okay. So that, 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 like I said, that summer was crazy for me. It was a blur. A lot of stuff was going on. But like I said, I was just running at everything. You know what I'm saying? I had so much pain and so much, you know, hurt built up and whatever. And so I was just... If yeah, I see yeah. you, it's going down. Like, yeah. I don't care where we at. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's red, bitch. Yeah, it's on sight, whatever. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. and it wasn't like, again, no malicious intent to it, but it like, when we out here, it's just kill or be killed type thing. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? And I was in a position where <laughs> I ain't let nobody kill me at this time. You feel what I'm saying? So like, and it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy because... When I found out about it, my pops came and got me. We was playing at Homestead in Water, LA. Okay. My pops told me everybody in the gym quickly found out. Gym was quiet, didn't want anyone to talk to me, which I res I respected. You know what I'm saying? I, I appreciate it to this day. You know, I sat in a corner by myself, hoodie on. I never forget a black hoodie on, zipped up to the top, just waiting. They ain't eat nothing, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> 
and my dad's like, come home. Like, just just come home. I'm like, yo, we got a game. I just want to play this game, this last game, you know what I'm saying? And whatever. And then I'll leave. I played the whole game. I ain't come out at all. I think I finished the game, game with something crazy, man. It was like 30 some, maybe like 12 boards. I had like seven assists. I had like it was crazy, man. Yeah, I, I just yeah. had a crazy game. And it was to the point, it was like I knew that summer was gonna be crazy from that game but I had no idea where all of that stuff was coming from. Like, you know how you play, you get tired. And I had no idea where I had this extra energy, this burst of this, this, and that was just from, you know, what I just heard. But, but no, that, that, that game after my dad told me, and I just absolutely blacked out in the game that dictated the rest of my summer. Yeah. Yeah. Cause yeah. once you do it once you're like, Oh, I ain't afraid to do it no more. I ain't afraid to show out. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and, and, and that was yeah, that was the thing. That was the problem I had as a, sometimes as a kid, and even sometimes like even when I was older in college, like you play with so many good players or whatever, and you want to be a team player, you want to be a system, you want to win, and this time whatever. So sometimes you find yourself taking a step back and not shining as bright as you can. But then other games, you're just like, nah, bruh, nah, I can really do this, like. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, but yeah, it, it was crazy. That summer was crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. So I know y'all had a state run and y'all uh, yeah. fell short, right? Yeah, we lost them. We lost the Memorial. Uh, and that was the only game I lost my senior year, the state championship. Is that with Jerron Maiman? Mm -hmm. Jerron Maiman, Banner Blue, Junior LaMamba, my Pootie, all them homies. Yeah. You, you they gave him Mr. Basketball right before the game. <laughs> right before our game, they gave Maimon basketball. Shout out to Maimon. That's my dog. No shade, no hate. That's not, that's my dog still to this day. I think he had tennis. He might be at Missouri. I think he had Missouri doing his thing, assistant coaching. But okay. yep, they gave him Mr. Basketball right before the game. And when I seen it, I was fueled to, like, get to it. We ain't had no shot after that. Yeah, <laughs> we had no shot, dog. It was, I like it was the approach, though. I like huh? the approach. I said, I like the approach. Oh, though. for sure. <laughs> oh, what? Oh, you, it was kind of like what Mike Mike said in the last dance. Oh, you gonna give him this? All right, that's fine. I'll take this kind of thing. <laughs> like, that's what I was thinking. Like, but nah, we ain't had no shot. They, I mean, it was close in the first quarter, about halfway through the first quarter. I had four fouls in the first quarter. Yeah. All right, don't get me started, cause yeah. <laughs> hey, no, 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 check it out, Jack. Check it out, Jack. Oh, everybody know that when I would play, when I went upstate, when we played against West Matthews, now we lost. Yeah, them. Memorial, we Memorial. Them. I'm telling you, ain't none of that. Listen, city conference. It's a lot of hand check. It's a lot of this upstate. Mm -mm, it's over with. It ain't happening. None of that. And, and hold on, hold on. One more thing, and I don't want to be like this, but. Madison planted the coast and Madison Memorial planted the coast. You can't do that, bro. You can't do that. And I said, I said that my, I said that. I'm like, bro, they street, they school is literally right down the street, bro. You can't do that. You can't do that, bro. They gotta move it, dog. Some, come on. Man, man. If Upstate for us was like at the Al McGuire Center, that's what I'm saying. Then, come on, dude. Saying, or even Racine, right down the street. That's what I'm saying. And that's 30 minutes away. Imagine, so imagine if we went to Memorial and our school right down the street, like, come on, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's crazy. But no, they, they, I always, I, still when I see Van and whatever, I, I give them shit about it, but. Yeah, 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 yeah you know exactly. Yeah, yeah so, so you fall short uh, yeah. with the state championship. You fall sure. short in Mr. Basketball. Mm -hmm. uh, you, I know you had a lot of offers, but you signed with Oregon, University of Oregon, right? Or yeah. Oregon State. Oregon, Oregon, the Ducks, yeah. University of Oregon. Yeah. I, how was that? How did that go about? You know, what made that your final decision to choose Oregon? So, again, leading back to what I was saying before, like, I was running away from a lot of stuff I was facing in my life. You know what I'm saying? And for me, I felt like the biggest thing that I needed was a change of scenery. It's crazy because I was just talking about my pops just yesterday. Like I didn't make a, I made a basketball decision to go to college, but I really didn't. I made a life decision. You know what I'm saying? Like I felt like I needed 
new scenery, something fresh, you know what I'm saying? Something where I could just kind of carve who I wanted to be, you know what I'm saying? And Oregon was it for me. I mean, obviously I felt out of my three official visits, Texas, Michigan State, and Oregon, I felt most at home at Michigan State. You know what I'm saying? K. Lou was there, Chris Allen, Darrell Summers, Raymar Morgan, Delvar Rowe, Draymond, Kaylin Lucas. Like, I felt like these is the dudes I want to hoop with. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I'm, I'm gonna go hoop here. Like, we was playing pickup. Like, it was, it felt natural. And pickup, they swinging me the rock. Ain't no, you, they passing the rock. I'm getting to it. They. So I felt most that I should have, my basketball decision was Michigan State. Not even close, you know what I'm saying? But again, I'm a test to my maturity at that age. I knew I didn't need a basketball decision. Basketball was gonna come, whether it was at Oregon, whether it was at Hawaii, wherever I was, basketball was gonna come. I needed a life decision. And I was trying to outrun some things um, like just, you know, stuff I was dealing with. So I went as far away from the crib as I could, you know what yeah. I'm saying? And that was good for me. I was telling my pops, like, that was good for me. Like getting out there, the scenery, the green, the, you know what I'm saying? The people, this, that, and whatever, the environment, that was good for me. Um, but it was dope, man. I ain't gonna lie to you. Like, let me not try to downplay my basketball experience at Oregon. It was dope. The, the, um, the, what is it? The Mac, the Mac, no, it's a Mac, Mac Knight Arena now, the big one they built. But the small one is like MacArthur Court. Man, we would play Washington, USC, UCLA. And they used to, they told me, and I thought they was, they was like, they was uh, bullshitting me. They would be like, yo, they have to be on the PA system when other teams are shooting free throws because it gets so loud, the basket shake. I thought, I thought they was bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Our first games was on the road, Washington. Washington State, Washington. We come home, we play Arizona, Arizona State, I think. First free throw. Bruh, I'm on the bench at this time because I, I wasn't starting right away. I'm on the bench, first free throw, bruh. You go up there to shoot it, they get to yelling. The backboard just doing this. I'm like, yo, what the? Fuck. It's live in there. It's cracking, dead cracking. I'm like, yo, what is this? Yo, I'm tripping out. And sure enough, the homie come over the PA system, student section, this, that, and whatever, the basket shaking. Boo, they throwing, boo, they throwing stuff crazy. I'm like, yo, that's crazy. So obviously they, they pick it up, this, that, whatever. And like, it got to a point where like, they were saying like only certain sections could like yell during the free throws, bro. Cause it was shaking so much. And it was like that all the time. Like I'll never forget when we played Washington. So this one, IT there, Quincy Pondexter. Uh, who else was there? Oh, big homie, I'm forgetting his name. Damn, but what Washington had a whip. Had a whip with IT at the head of him. Yeah. Oh man, we played the liveest game ever at, at the crib. Oh, they and they wore their black uniforms, and we had like the what we had on the yellow joints. Oh, it was cracking. Oh man, it was Beautiful cracking. Scenery. It, was, it oh, was cracking. And then to see like the point guard that I had, Tawan Porter from Detroit, shout out to my boy TP. Um, him and IT were both seniors, so they had been going at it since their freshman year. So this was like they, like last duel kind of thing. Mm. Oh man. It was special to watch, special to watch. You know what I'm saying? And then when I was out there playing, but it's crazy. But no, uh, MacArthur Court used to shake during yeah. free throws, bro. I had never seen, still to this day, I've never seen anything like it. it used yeah. to shake, bro. They come on the pit, stop screaming, this, that, whatever, the basket shaking. We can't proceed with the game when the basket shaking. Basket interference all the time. I see, yo, it's crazy. That's bananas, dude. But no, Oregon was dope basketball-wise. Obviously, we got to travel the West Coast, Arizona, all that other stuff. Football was crazy. Football season was crazy. I remember my freshman year, we beat uh, USC on Halloween night at the crib. Crazy. <laughs> crazy. I'm already, hold on, what, hold on, what day was that on? Um... It was a Saturday, too. Oh my God. Okay. Carry on. College football on Saturday. It was a Saturday. Cracking. 
after the game. <laughs> oh my God. So, I don't even speak of this night. Like it, it, it was, man, it was crazy. I'm talking about they shutting down streets, not, not just no, I'm talking about main streets. Football players parking their cars across the street. Got the DJ booth in the grass on, on the front lawn. Like it was, oh man, it was crazy, bro. It was crazy. Nah. That, but no, Oregon was a dope experience. I met a lot of dope people out there. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people still to this day that check in, show love, tap in. So shout out to all my folks from Oregon. If they catch a hold of this, you know, you over there on the West Coast, so they might. But no, Oregon was a really dope experience. I went there uh, because kind of like my older brother, kind of like a mentor I had, Yasir Roseman, who at Indiana now. Shout out my boy, Yah. Uh, I, <laughs> this was crazy. I think it was my junior year. And I, I'm warming up at Peach Jam. Warming up, me and Lacey, whatever. We about to play the Gauchos. We popped them niggas too. I mean, we popped them. <laughs> we we popped them too. We dubbed them. First game out of Peach Jam. Yeah. We the game, dubbed them. And I'm warming up or whatever, you know. And hey, you can, you can dunk and get crazy. So I put one down crazy. And I come down and he's sitting right in front. I'm like, yo, what you, what you doing here? <laughs> He get to laugh and the cheese and he's like, it's like I, I came I'm here to see you. We in Atlanta. He from Atlanta, so I'm like, oh, all right, cool. This that whatever. Like, like the fan pull up. He's like, no, nah, I'm coaching. I said, where you coach at? He said, oh. the moment he said it, I said, I'm gone. You go. I'm gone. Cause that's somebody I trust, and trust is big for me. That's somebody I trust. That's somebody I know. You know what I'm saying? He was like, and then I met Kenny Payne. I met Kenny Payne. That kind of sealed the deal. But then I met Ernie Kent. Oh, you got a, a black head coach? A black head assistant coach? And then another black coach? Oh, come on, man. What are we coach doing here? Is there? What are, we, what are we doing here? He's like, oh, yeah, we're trying to build something, this, that, whatever. All right, cool. I'm going to keep y'all in mind. But the whole time I knew, like, if it get down to it and it's a tough decision, I'm going to go where I trust somebody. You know what I'm saying? And the whole time I was there, man, he would call me. They would, man. <laughs> Q boy, let me tell you about this story, dog. <laughs> I, I, I pack all my stuff, man, the little stuff I got. Come out to Oregon or whatever. And I'm in my dorm. I heard the stories about Kenny Payne running people crazy, conditioning <laughs> and workouts. And I, I ain't tripping. You know where I'm from? I ain't tripping. Like, you know what I'm saying? I ain't worried about that. I worked out with B on North Division track Saturday <laughs> mornings. I ain't worried about nothing. What? So uh, KP called me. My phone was sitting on the bed. I'm looking at it. I look at it and put it down. I know, I ain't, I ain't whatever. But something tell me, like, yo, Millie, check the window. I peeped the blinds, like, my man sitting outside, outside my dorm. He called me again. I answered, bring your ass outside. I seen you open the blinds. <laughs> <laughs> I go outside, yo, he take me to this some park in Oregon, some famous park that Steve Prefontaine used to run, the famous runner from Oregon. And it's this hill, dog. And this hill goes like, it goes, it's like, it goes, gradually goes up and then you hit like a point and it's steep and it goes straight up. We had to run, what was it, 10 of them? 10 hills maybe. And when you say seven. seeing this up, down, one. No, no, no. Up. Oh, you got to get up in a minute. This is how long the hill is. You have to get up the hill in a minute or 57 seconds or something like that. You got to get up the hill. Once you get up there, you get a minute up there and then you, you walk down and then you hear them, whatever, sound off again and you run. I probably ran seven of them. Maybe seven of them. Maybe seven. I probably, it was probably six, but I, anywhere from six, I think six or seven, I ran them. And the next three, I, I feel like I blacked out because <laughs> when I came back to, they was finishing 10. The, the hill was crazy. Is, is the will, is the hill worse than uh, down at the lake in Milwaukee? Oh, easy, easy, Whoa. easy. You talking about the hill with the sand pits next to the yeah. stairs? The hill that I was running, probably three times as long as that hill. 
and y'all had to make it in 50, 57, 58 minutes. 58 I mean, seconds. Seconds. <laughs> wow. Because you, you, it's like a spurt. Like the first part is like a slow, gradual, whatever. And then you hit this heel and like hit this corner and it's steep, yo. It's like, like you running straight up. It was crazy. And the first couple of them, I'm like, yeah, I can do this. I can do this. Got about four, five. I'm like, Phew. I think that I think it was. I think I did do seven because I got to six and I told KP, like, hey, bro, like, this might be it for me. I'm done. What yeah. you mean? I said, you, what? I was just laying in the bed, bro. I, do, I ain't planning on doing nothing today. And now I'm doing this. Like, but that early on, and that was literally, I was, I was probably there for like two days, and he did that. That early on told me and it showed me, like, this motherfucker really out here working and doing stuff like this, like this is what it's gonna take to be what you were on that level, on this level, like it takes stuff like this. So yeah, it, the rude awakening, early. I had I had more running shoes at Oregon, more running and track shoes than I had hoop sneakers <laughs> at a certain point in time. Cause yeah, yeah. we was running turf, football stadiums, that hill everywhere. Yeah. So. Now now, now, let me ask you this before the transfer. Do you okay. feel if you went to Michigan State, you would have got drafted? Mm -hmm. I'm going to take it a step further. I think if I stayed my sophomore year at Oregon, I still go first round. Because See, you, was in, you was inserted in the starting lineup your freshman year. Mm -hmm. Right away. Right away. I played the, I played the little preseason tournament. I averaged like 16 in the preseason tournament. It was at our home gym. We played like two, like uh, mid-major D1s or whatever. But still, like as a freshman out of college, I mean, a freshman out of high school coming in and doing that. Um, but yeah, I, I'll take it even a step further. If, if I stay at Oregon for my sophomore year, because, and I don't know this, I, I didn't know this. I didn't pay attention to drafts and draft boards and, like I was just, at that point I was hooping because I love it. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't paying attention to mock drafts and stuff. But Baba, shout out my boy Baba, he was always in my ear like, yo, you 30 on the mock right now. I'm like, what, 30 on the mock? He's like, yeah, nigga, you the last pick in the first round right now. They got you at that, the way too early, whatever, they got you at 30. You the last pick in the first round. Like, and he would always update me and stuff like that, but I never paid attention. But the end of my freshman year, when they fired everybody, they fired the AD, my coach, the head, the, everybody cleaned, cleaned it out. The first thing I'm thinking, like, I came all the way over here and trusted in somebody. Now they finna bring in somebody I don't know. Like, how is that gonna work? I'm like, Kenny Payne went to Kentucky. So I, I was like, KP, you know what I'm saying? Maybe I should come to Kentucky with you. He was like, nah. I love to bring you cows, bringing me on this time, whatever. I'm not sure about what he has already. So I'm not trying to come in and just be like, Hey, I'm bringing my, you know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to bite off too much. Yeah. Understandable. All right, cool. You no know, tap in and see what's what that didn't work out. So I leave obviously school year over, I leave and I go home and I'm talking to my pops about it and whatever. And he was like, well, do you want to go back? And, I'm like, you know, I, I do like it out there. You know what I'm saying? And it's that whatever, it's far as hell, I don't see y'all, but I do enjoy it. But I don't, and at this time they hired Dana Altman from Creighton. Chris, uh, coach, I think Lawrence Fish, Fish, Fishburn or something like that. Tony Stubblefield, that's at DePaul right now. He was out there too, Coach Stubbs. And every day, bro, while I was home, until I made my decision to get my release and go to Marquette, Every day, Coach Fish called me. Coming back, right? Coming back, right? We got big plans for you. This time, whatever. We're going this, we're gonna build this. We got big plans for you, whatever, whatever, whatever. And I'm like, all right, yeah, maybe, you know what I'm saying? I don't really know. But I obviously I ended up pulling the trigger and going to Marquette. But I'll 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 that's a hill I'll die on. If I stay and go back my sophomore year, I leave after my sophomore year. And I go anywhere from 15 to 25. I agree. Yeah. You know That's what I'm saying? Okay. Because 
back then the Pac-10 was geared for me. Big, skilled, tall, skilled, versatile guy that can do it all. You know what I'm saying? And that's that my freshman year was rough because it was up and down. We was up and down. The coach was on the hot seat. So he was trying to, everybody was trying to do their own thing. You got a guy coming in knowing he's going to be here and knowing he's going to invest in you and try to, you know what I'm saying, get you to where you're going to be. I I think anywhere I go from 15 to 25, if I stay at Oregon my sophomore year. And if I go to Michigan State, this is the, it's the crazy thing about it because you asked if I get drafted, we go to Michigan State my freshman year. Final Four, because they went to a Final Four. My sophomore year, K. Lou hit the shadow of Maryland. Final Four again. I'm for sure out of there. <laughs> for sure, go. I'm out of there, and I might be in the same place, anywhere in that same range, 15, 25, whatever. But, or it could have been later. But, yeah, yeah, for sure. So, so you transfer to Marquette, mm -hmm. and when you make that, when you transfer, you had yeah. to sit out a year, right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, what's going through your head then? Not, like you, you went into Oregon. You go through that situation. You went to a school that yeah. you trusted the program, the culture, right, right, right. And everything. So you transfer, and mm -hmm. now you got to sit out a year. What's your what's your mind frame at now? You know what I'm saying? Oh, I didn't know. Honestly, I didn't know what I was getting myself into. You know, we had a um, kind of had like an OG. She was a hooper from Racine. I went to Marquette, Crystal Ellis, bucket. Right. My home girl, yeah. Bucket, KE was a bucket. Still is to this day when she want to get down. So she was kind of like my OG and she was like one of the people I talked to when I was going there. And she was like, this is the thing she told me. This is the only thing she told me, Cuba. She was like, here, we work, we, we play hard, but we work harder. And I'm thinking like in terms of the game, like, oh, we're we going to play hard, but we're going to work hard. No, and then off the flow, we're going to play hard. Like, we're going we gonna to kick it. We're going to do this. We're going to do that, whatever, whatever. But whenever the practice time or whatever, like, we're getting it in. We're going to sweat it out. We're going to do whatever it is. So going in, my redshirt year, that was Jimmy's senior year. So that's Jimmy. So every day in practice, I'm going against Jimmy, J, DJO, Bikes. Yes. Joe False. Like, who else was there? Eric Williams was my class. He was already there. Like, it was just, but the first three guys, like Jimmy, Jay, and DJ, and Bikes, the first four dudes, I'm the redshirt dude. So I have to guard them in practice. Yeah. I go from guarding Jimmy to guarding Jay. So now I'm in a ball screen with Bikes. And DJ, man, it was my, that retro year was crazy, crazy. But I think, and again, it was kind of like that year I had my freshman year in high school that kind of like boosted my confidence. Cause when it came to scout team. Oh yeah, you got the green light. Oh the guy, this is my game. I'm going crazy. Red penny on and everything. No, yes. I couldn't wait until a couple of days before the game. Oh yeah. And I, I, <laughs> <laughs> and so this was like midway through the season like we played somebody and their main score was a lefty I'm in pedestrians a lot of people don't know that I'm in practice shooting left handed going crazy <laughs> you know what I'm saying or I, you know I had a couple moments and I'm like so that <laughs> kind of gave me the same confidence I got in high school or whatever but uh, Marquette was crazy man like and I think the way that it was such a culture shock to me, because even though I was from that same grit, that same in your face, this, that, and whatever, I took a year off. I went out and I played in the more finesse, more this, more that. So I'm trying to bring the new, what I learned back. And it's like, nah, none of that champ. Like mm, elbow in your, nah, I'm like, oh, all right. So I, it kind of, allowed me to blend what I took from there, what I always had. So now Marquette was a crazy experience because like right off the bat, like the first day I was like two minutes late because I didn't know where I was going to class. Oh man. Coach was waiting for me. <sighs> late Wilson. Gotta be better than that. See you at five in the morning. Excuse me? See you at five in the morning. Five miles, five in the morning, five at five. 
I'm like, dog, you can't be serious. Sure enough, he texts me at 4.30. Wilson, hope you're on your way to the gym. Brad Archie, shout out my boy Brad Archie. He's my guy, chief. But no, uh, and so it was such a culture shock. It's like, I mean, at Oregon, they was checking classes and whatever, but the first day, boom, you know what I'm saying? And then you do individual workouts. Everybody in the city know about boot camp. Boot camp had me questioning whether I made the right decision or not, Q-Bar. I ain't even gonna lie to you talk. <laughs> and I'm doing all this and I can't play? Oh, yeah, yeah. Did I make the right decision here? Like, why am I here? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, like, nah, so, but not, but Marquette gave me what I needed. That was my basketball decision. So I made a life decision first, and then my basketball decision came. So, like I said, basketball was going to come regardless of whatever, but I feel like I did the right thing. I feel like I should have left after my junior year, but, I mean, that's that's another story, but it is what it is. Yeah, so going into – yeah, I agree with you, though. So going into Marquette, that red, that red shirt year, how was you and Buzz Williams' uh, relationship? So me and Buzz always had, like – it was like a different relationship because Buzz is used to like hard nosed dudes, tough dudes or whatever. Not to say that I'm not, but like dudes are just like, if he's like, yo, run through that wall, dudes are just gonna run through the wall. Where he tell me like, yo, Jamil, run through the wall. I'm like, well, it's a door right there. So I'm just going through the door. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, so I was that guy that was like, nah, I'm gonna use my head. Like I ain't finna just blindly walk it. So we would bump heads about that a lot, but he loved that about me because it was like, it was like a love hate thing because he knew I would hold other people accountable. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, you're not doing right or all oh, this, that, whatever. I still remember my, uh, my senior year, this fast forward. We was in practice and we was hooping and this, that, and whatever, we doing a drill. And the freshmen are on defense and you know, you gotta get a couple stops and you don't get off defense or whatever. And I still remember him yelling in the freshman face, like, and you know, Buzz used to dip, he spit all, whatever. He's screaming. And he's like, this motherfucker is trying to eat. He's trying to feed his motherfucking family, like going crazy. Like he going, this what you, he do this every day. Like going crazy. And like that kind of, that moment there kind of like smoothed our relationship over. You know what I'm saying? Even though it was love, hate the whole time. I love Buzz off the floor, he loved me off the floor. But on the floor, we would always clash because again, like I'm gonna figure out a different way to do the same thing. So, um, but that moment kind of like smoothed our relationship over because it let me know that he appreciated how I went about things, even if he didn't say it all the time. So, but uh, our relationship was cool. It was, like I said, it was love, hate, but it was always love there. Still to this day, I love Buzz. I follow him on Twitter. He texts me sometimes, this, that, whatever. You know, I seen him at Devontae's wedding a couple of years ago. We chop it up. But no, it's always love. He's he's one of the most genuine people I, I've, I've met when it comes to the game of basketball. Yeah. Because not only is it about ball for him, he he legitimately tries to better you as a young man. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like he, I remember he had dudes learning checkbooks, how to tie ties and all this other stuff. And then at the same time, it's like, like I said before, a lot of people ain't blessed with a two-parent household. I was. My pops taught me how to tie a tie. My mom's taught me how to balance the checkbook. So we doing all this stuff and I'm just sitting there. So it was just like, he couldn't connect with me the same way he would connect with other dudes. Cause he teaching these other dudes real life, life lessons, like stuff somebody didn't teach them before. Me, I'm like, I, I know how to do this. You know what I'm saying? So. There was that, but other than that, it was all always love between us. He would always just make fun of me and try to call me soft and whatever. Yeah. You so want to be finesse and cute. I get it done, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so, but no, nah, it's, it's always been love with uh, my guy. But going in, I, I definitely had to prove myself. Yeah. And one of the first things he said to me, he took a bottle, he was drinking like a Gatorade or something. And he was like, this bottle is you. My dad's sitting right next to me. This bottle is you. So already I'm like, all right, you are weird. You, you are yeah. weird. <laughs> this bottle is you. He said, you know what I'm going to do every day? Yeah, basically. He's like, you know what I'm going to do every day? I'm like, what? Smack that ball. Pow! I look at my dad. 
He's like, I ain't gonna hit you, but I'm gonna tip the bottle over every day. I'm gonna see what comes out every day. I'm gonna push you to your limits every day. So to see what spills out of you, see what's it really inside of you. Like that. that was the first thing he said to me when I walked in his office. Talked to my dad, whatever, didn't, talk, didn't really acknowledge me, which is, all right, I get it. You trying to sell me, you trying to sell my dad on you as a coach. I get it. And then he turned to me and that was the first thing he said, this bottle is you, I'm gonna do this every day. Pick it up, pick it up. I wanna see what comes out of you every day. And real spill, every day, every day. Never let me get a pass for nothing. Somebody, something can happen completely on the other side of the gym. It was my fault. <laughs> yeah. Every day, dog, every day it was something, you know what I'm saying? So it wasn't until like later on that we built that rapport with, all right, cool. You got a leash, you got this leeway, whatever. But them first two years, every day, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, that's, and he he, he knew what he was doing. He seen the for potential sure. for you. For sure, he knew yeah. what type of player that right. he just got to transfer. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? So, right. you know, I love coaches that that do that. He knew you were very smart too. Uh-huh, yeah. He knew that yeah, you was yeah. very smart. So what can I do to, Exactly. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Like, other stuff. Yeah. Uh -huh. Exactly. Yep, yep. So shout out to Coach Buzz. Though. I For like sure. Shout out to my man, Uzzy. Yeah. So, so, so Junior, so you have your red shirt here. Yep. Right? You, you, you got the ultimate green bean on the scout team. <laughs> so, Great. Great. Yeah. so you go to you, your junior year, you play. Yeah. And uh, you insert it into the starting lineup. Yeah. How was... How was your approach to the game? Like, how was you feeling? I know you geek, you excited. So my junior year was actually kind of crazy because I get in the starting lineup. I earned it. Sophomore year, I was in the starting lineup because guys got hurt. I mean, that's when we did the whole small ball thing. I was at the five, Jay was at the four, and we just played small. We was running, running teams out the gym. We was running UConn, Syracuse, all the teams. We just running them out the gym because you got me at the five. I'm not a five. I'm a tall three, to be honest with you. If we're going to call a spade a spade, I'm a tall ass three. Yep. So I'm running rim to rim, and I got Andre Drummond, Alex Oriaki, Fab Mello. Shout out to uh, Recipes Fab Mello. I got all these uh, Henry Sims, uh, Yancey Gates, like all these true five, big fives chasing me, and they can't. I'm running out ball screens. I'm slipping out doing this. Like It's hard to keep up. So that was my sophomore year. So going into my junior year, I started at the four. Jay was leaving. I knew the four position was mine. I'm like, all right. But again, I took the approach of instead of shining as bright early on, I took the in the season, instead of shining as bright as I should have, let's get everybody involved. Let's do this. Let's try to control the game. And it was terrible for me. I was having games eight points, six points, whatever. So Buzz made a change early. He started my boy Juan Anderson. Now he's known as Juan Toscano Anderson. Shout out my boy JTA, NBA champ, 9-5, East Oakland. So he started Juan. So in st this is the whole thing. I'm going to tip that bottle over. I'm going to see what you got. So in, in him starting Juan, it gave me a more aggressive approach. Like, I'm not playing the first five, six minutes of the game or media timeout, whatever. So now when I come in, it's straight to it. I'm getting straight to it. So he did that. In Maui or right after Maui in Hawaii. And once he did that, it was just like, cool. Like you, you gonna do this? Cool. No disrespect to my boy Juan or anything like that, but you want to do this? I'm gonna show you why this is where I'm supposed to be. So then it, it just changed my whole season. Like it changed my whole season. I'm like, I'm, I played with the aggression and whatever that I didn't have. I mean, I'm running at Notre Dame, Cincinnati, Q's, UConn, like mm -hmm. USF, like to the point like where we partying on dudes. Like we up 15, 20, we partying, going crazy. We got Van on the wing, Junior, Derek in the back, Juan, Trent Lockett was there with us. We had Big Tate, who in Japan going crazy. Uh, we had Chris, like, we had a team that was like, 
however you want to play it, we, we, we can throw it. We got two true fives. We can throw it down to the post. It was me at the stretch four and then we're one. So you can get it that way. That van and who else was on the wing with us? Damn, forget me. Damn, slip of mind. Jake Thomas, shooter from St. Cats, white boy. Shout out my boy Jake. He got his own little uh, thing going on with like, uh, can, not construction, factories or something like that, but he's doing big things. But him, so Jake and it was ended up starting. Our starters was Junior, Jake, Van, Juan, and Devon. Juan and Chris, me and Devontae would come in together. And I watched Tay his whole career. Tay just came in and scored. I'm like, shit, we come in together, Tay, we come in and do the same thing now. Yeah, yeah. So, so right, like I said, it added a whole different approach to it. Like, all right, I'm coming in to this, this, that, and whatever. So, uh, so my junior year was like really eye-opening for me too. Cause it was like, no matter who you are or what people know about you, like, you got to prove it. Like, you got to show it every night, every whatever. So when Buzz made that change, he really clicked that into me. So, like, so, again, he knew what it was, and he fi figured, finally figured it out. Like, oh, okay, this is going to do it. Like, oh, I'm going to tip it over this way, and this is going to do it. Like, giving someone else what he feels he deserves type deal. So, yeah. Exactly. yeah. But, no, yeah. It, it was crazy. Yeah, well, first of all, I want to apologize because I thought when you transfer, you did you technically miss your uh, sophomore year and then missed it, missed my sophomore year. Okay, so, so it was freshman. going to your junior year then, right? Yeah. So no, no. So I, my freshman year at Oregon, I missed my sophomore year. So my red shirt sophomore year was that was the year where we played small ball. Where our starting lineup was like junior. Bike, no, Junior, yeah, yeah, no, not bikes. Junior, Van, DJO, Jay, myself. Chris O'Toole tore his ACL that year and Devontae dislocated his knee. Got you. Okay. So we was literally playing with like six or seven people. And like, but we was just running cats. Like, it yeah. is what it was. And then we ran into Florida in the tournament and Brad Bill was on a whole different, no, nah, he was on a whole different level. Like. Yeah. He gave he gave niggas exactly what they was looking for that day, and that's how it is sometimes. Like you just run into somebody, and even at the wreck or whatever, like sometimes you just run into somebody, and no matter what, like it's just day day, and it was just his day that day. Um, and that's when they had it was him, Bradley Beal, Scotty Wilbekin, Michael Fraser, Eric Murphy, Patrick Young, Big Ass, like <laughs> Casey Prather, like they they had some dudes down there. You know what I'm saying? Um, so then my red shirt junior year was technically my senior year was the year all that stuff happened. I was just talking about was uh Buzz pulled me from the starting line up and I'm like, all right, cool. Like okay, you gonna so get I just mixed? Got mixed up. My yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Up but I mean, up. yeah, for sure. Yeah. So so the NCAA tournament, right? And I'm gonna ask you this. So we know I know the NCAA tournament cracking, you know what I'm saying. Every time I remember you saying earlier that Oregon was cracking, <laughs> which experience was like cracking harder for you? The NCAA tournament, your first game, or Oregon? I would say, I would, I mean, I would say the NCAA tournament, and only because it's not just like one, you get to see your fan base travel, you get to see another fan base you didn't ever think you was gonna run into. So my first tournament game, we play in Louisville. We play Murray State. Okay. And I'm like, it's a lot of big blue fans in here because Kentucky got the one seed, obviously. A lot of big blue fans in here. I see, but Marquette Murray State got the same colors, yellow and navy blue. Mm -hmm. I see our fans. I kind of see they fans. And then you got the occasional red in there because Louisville. All right, whatever. And I'm thinking, because I think you Kentucky played after us. They played either after us. No, they played after us because, you know, big blue fans. Is, and the gym was so fucking loud. They was rooting against us. And I'm, like, what the, I'm like, what's going on? So I think midway through the game, I tapped like, uh, the since coach, I think Jamie McNeely, shout out my boy Uncle Earl. I'm like, yo, Uncle Earl, where Murray State at, bro? 
It's right down the road. It's like 30 minutes down, whatever. I said, it's in Kentucky? <laughs> he said, yeah, it's, it's right down the joint. So I'm like, yo, we got Kentucky fans rooting against us, Murray State. Louis, we ended up beating them. But it was just crazy, you know what I'm saying? And the atmosphere like that is, those are, I mean, those are some of the brightest lights, like legit brightest lights. Like I get it, NBA, NBA Finals for sure, the NBA playoffs. Yeah. But like the NCAA tournament, that's like on that level as far as collegiate sports. Like the NCAA tournament is like, it's a different experience. And the year we went to the Elite Eight, we beat Miami to get to the Elite Eight, which mm -hmm. was the next year. Oh, man. Like, it was, it was crazy. It's, it's crazy, yo. It's, it's, and, like, you get police escorts to and from the hotel. Like, you, you know what I mean, it's, like, fans is lined up for the walkout. You, like, you feel like you on top of it all. It's crazy, man. It, it's, it's something that, obviously, when knucklehead get to a certain age, I'm gonna tell him about, and you know, want him to experience. But it is definitely crazy, man. It's nothing like March Madness. Yeah, March Madness is crazy, and y'all boys was on fire, man. I remember watching that, dude. I can't remember like the order of the teams. Yeah, I'm like, I don't know why it was, but every like February would roll around, like midway through February, March. We would just get on here. And it's crazy because we would always lose like in the second round of the Big East tournament. Even when we won the Big East champion regular, se regular season joint, I think we still lost in the second or first round in the Big East tournament. But once that bid came in for us to be in the NCAA tournament, oh, it was, we was getting to the Sweet 16. It, it, we was getting to the Sweet 16 every time. Like it wasn't even close. Yeah, exactly. Dude, like, dude, y'all had a wonderful team. Like, dog, it, uh, yeah, y'all was just crazy. Cause you know, Marquette, when D Way was there, made it to, you know, Tribe Jack, yeah. they made it to the Final Four and yeah, stuff. But sure. at that time, Bucks haven't won anything. Mm -hmm, you no, know, mm -hmm. you know, the Badgers. No. Yeah. So I just remember y'all run, and I'm just like, dude, if we win like the national, like, <laughs> the Natty, it's, it's about to go. Oh, oh crazy. No, and, and the crazy thing about that, we had a few run-ins and like dust-ups with like a couple homies from the Bucks. Cause like we because you know, obviously we shared the Bradley. We shared the Bradley Center. Yeah. And I don't remember who said it, but somebody, somebody from our, our, our team told one of them niggas, like, we keep your lights on. Y'all ain't selling no tickets. <laughs> That was facts back then, bro. <laughs> it was. And it was crazy because then after that, like, you know what I'm saying? They they looked at us different. They had whatever. But, I mean, it was all love. But, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? They, it was crazy, like, because you wouldn't expect somebody to just randomly say, like, what? We keep your lights on, brother. We sell out. Our, we, we selling this joint out. You know what I'm saying? Not sure. Yeah. But, no, um, I, I thought about that. And I think about it all the all the time that elite eight game to get to the final four we went into halftime against syracuse and we had just played syracuse a couple weeks before that on big monday and we beat them at the crib we went into halftime 25 21 or 23 something like that we was either down two points or four points or something like that and we were gas we had just played not the day before but like two days ago, and we played Miami. And we gave Miami everything they was looking for. We smoked Miami, you know what I'm saying? We gave them everything they was looking for. And we came out versus Q, uh, Q's, and the only one, only person that could really buy a shot was Devontae. I wasn't hit, Van wasn't hit, Junior couldn't get none to roll, Trent couldn't get none to roll. Like, only person was Tay, he was keeping us in the game. Like I said, we went to halftime, four points. And I still remember being in a half in the in a locker room and looking around and dudes were just gassed, exhausted, just looking for something to try and, you know what I'm saying? Just yeah, just like damn, like yeah, legs yeah. heavy, whatever. And we couldn't find we was 20 minutes away from a final four. 20 minutes, dog. And it's crazy. We was 20 minutes away from it. But they yeah, they ended up beating us, but but no, March Madness was hands down one of my best experiences in college. Oh yeah, I mean I'm already. 
Yeah, and that's that's the ultimate goal when you're in college. Man. For sure, for sure, for Try sure. Try to win yeah. the national championship. Right, right, man. right, right, right. Even though y'all fell short, man, just you able to tell your young, you know, your kids and your, you know, your son, the right. experience is just yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Right. Like, right. Get bro. you, get you. And and the crazy thing about it, my pops used to always tell me, like, because he like I said, my pops won a national championship at Whitewater, and he would always be like, yo, get you one of these. Go get you one of these. Like, go. You know what I'm saying? So that was always, yeah. So that was always my thing. He was like, go get you one of these. And like, you know what I'm saying? So that was always to try and get there. And, you know, they got the banners in Marquette. 1977 was last year. They won it. And it was just like to, if you bring a banner here, like you're immortalized, brother. Like we're, you can stop playing a day after y'all win it. You are immortalized. You probably can eat for free on Marquette campus for However long, however bad it get, you go there and you get a meal, you know what I'm saying, or whatever. But, but yeah, that was always, that, that was one of the things, obviously, you know, not everyone does it, but that was definitely one of the things I want to do. Bring a championship to the crib? Man, on the real. Hey, but you know what? Even though y'all feel short, I think you still can go to the campus now and get some free Oh, food. for sure, yeah, I go up there and get down. <laughs> they, they, but that's the thing, man, they show love, man. Marquette is... They show love, man. Even when we do the little summer tournament thing, little TVT thing, yo, they show oh. mad love. Like this year, they gave us a backpack, duffel bag full of gear. Like oh, they show man. love, bro. And 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 you know that's one of the things like I was that makes me happy with my decision of going there. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying I went in like my basketball decision ended up being a life decision as well. Yeah, you know what I'm saying yeah. family and the bonds that I got with them dudes like. The same dudes I came in with, I talked to them dudes every couple days or whatever. We all got a little group text and tap in. Where you at? What you doing? So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's dope. All right, sure. so, yeah, so you you get your degree at Marquette University. Yep. Um, what teams did you work out with? Because, hold on, is it workout first, then summer league? Yeah, it's workout first, then summer league. So, okay. I had 16 workouts. Shit. I only did 12. I missed Milwaukee, Detroit, and Chicago because I... Milwaukee dog. Come on, man. So I was... I had... So this is this was my workout schedule. I, I, I don't forget stuff like this. I've got weird memory or whatever. So my workout schedule went... Um, my first one was Phoenix... I left Phoenix, I went to Utah. I was supposed to leave Utah and go Milwaukee, Detroit, Chicago. In Utah, we're playing. I rolled my ankle bad on CJ Fair's foot. Bow, from Syracuse. From Syracuse, yeah. So yeah. immediately, I can't, I can't really finish the workout. I'm trying, I look bad, so I just bow out. So from there, I fly right back to Florida where I was working out at. So I missed like those three and then I missed one more that I ended up making up. So from there, then I went Indiana. I went Toronto. I went Detroit. I went Houston. Uh, Houston, from Houston, I went to Houston, I went to Orlando, I think. And then from Orlando, I was back in Florida. So I went back to where I was at. And then I finished Toronto, uh, back to Utah. And then I went, and then my last one was slipping my mind. So I did that. And then obviously it was a draft. And, you know, my senior year wasn't the greatest. That's why I said I should have left after my junior year. But I went to Portsmouth and whatever. I tore that down. First team all Portsmouth, all that. You know what I'm saying? And I remember an NBA scout telling me, like, when I was there, I'm re-interested in you. I was like, huh? Mm -hmm. It was like your senior year was kind of just, eh. Your junior year and then your senior year was kind of, eh. Guys were take, expecting you to take the next step and kind of take that young team to like the tournament. You know what I'm saying? It didn't happen for a magnitude of reasons. 
but he was like, I'm reinvested in you. I'm reinterested. I'm reinvested in you. Like seeing you out here and playing against not guys that are younger than you, either guys that are your age or older than you, because it's all seniors. I'm reinvested. I'm like, all right, cool. You know what I'm saying? So I did my thing and then I had to work out to whatever. And um, I think leading up to the draft, my agent, he was telling me, Toronto has got a pick at 52 that uh, it was Toronto at 52 and then it was someone else at like 48 or 49. It was like, these are two spots that you could arguably like whatever. I remember him calling me, I like pick 47 and I'm thinking like, shit, this is it. Oh, it's all, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, shit, I'm like, shh, shh, shh. So in the phone, he's like, uh, I forget so-and-so, they're gonna go a different way at 49. Cool. So I'm like 52. He's like, Toronto really likes you. You had a really good workout there, this style, whatever. I'm working out with like Clint Capella. I dunk Clint Capella. In <laughs> Fine. I, so um, whatever. Um, I'm gonna work out. I had my best, like, so I did all the pre-draft stuff there. Like Toronto makes you do it there because whatever. So I had like my verse, my best vertical test. It was like 44 or 43 on the vertical joint. I was running one leg, got it. I think I did like 18 reps of 185. Like I had like my, I don't know what the fuck was in the breakfast at whatever, but I had my best workout there. So I'm thinking like 52 is it. And I love Toronto. I was there for a week. I'm at the front office. I did all the, cause you know, you gotta cross the border and do all the other stuff. So your workout is, my workout was like a day, but I was there for like four days. You know what I'm saying? So I'm walking around you know, Junior Kadugan from Canada. So I linked up with him and his homies. Like, we kicking it. We had dinner and stuff. So I'm like, you know what? This this could be it. This could be home. And I'm cool here. Like, this is like this this is cool. Like, it's away from whatever, but it's not too far. Like, Toronto really across the board. Really, like, I can still get, you know, the crib and whatever. Eastern Conference, Chicago, Milwaukee, Indiana, like, oh, yeah. Detroit. My people can get to all of them. Cool. And I remember him calling me right before that one, like, they're gonna take the kid from UConn, DeAndre Daniels. And I'm like, what? What? And so they ended up taking him. Then obviously I went undrafted, but yep. I, I remember all of that, man. June 26, 2014. That was a draft. Yeah, yeah, man. And did that did that kind of hurt your spirit, you know, uh not being drafted? Oh uh, yeah, for sure. Because anytime you feel like you're capable or qualified for something and it doesn't happen, you feel like you've been shorted. So, of course, I felt that way. You know what I'm saying? I felt like I was better than a lot of dudes that was taking the draft. I still feel like I'm better than a lot of dudes in the NBA now. That's just me. Yeah. Um, so, so when that happened, yeah, I was, you know, I was upset, but I, immediately, like I took the time to take myself out of it and thank everybody that came to the little watch party. Thank you guys for coming. Obviously the night didn't go the way we wanted it to, but we're going to make a way. We're going to find a way to stop whatever. But mm. yeah, man, it, it hurt a lot. Because, you know, as a kid, you you always see people up there shake the commissioner hand, put the hat on. Like, even though I wasn't there, the phone call, you know, they zoom in and, you know, they know whatever, but yeah, that, that hurt. But again, it's just like, you know, sink or swim at this point. You're going to quit or you're going to keep pushing. So exactly, it, it wasn't nothing but just added to the fuel. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you took that energy like you've been doing your freshman year. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Racing, Horlick, and then right. how you did at Marquette. For sure. Yeah, I know you took that energy and went crazy overseas. We're just going to go with it, yeah. Yeah, you went so, crazy overseas, man. And yeah. what was the uh, what was the country you went to when you were uh, when you were undrafted? I went so my first year I started in the G League, and then my second year I went to try with the Mavericks again. I was the last cut. I was in G League again, but then I was like, man, at that point I'm like, man, I've been under the NBA radar for two years. I ain't want none. I'm leaving. So I went to Italy. The first half of the season I struggled away from home by myself, this time whatever. Um, and uh, I got to go home for a week and it just kind of like replenished my soul. 
I went back. Second half of the season, I went on a tear. Just went on a tear. And it was at one point in time, I was the only American that wasn't hurt. All the uh, other Americans was hurt, just nagging injuries. Somebody had a back, someone had a groin, someone had a calf, other had an ankle. And I'm winning games as the only American. I'm playing with all the time, winning games. And like, again, like just doing it and knowing that I could do it, just again, it just added to my confidence, added to whatever. So uh, yeah, Italy was my first stint overseas and, and went crazy that second half of the whatever. And actually, a lot of people don't know that I signed to go back to Europe because this is when they was about to do start doing the two ways and stuff. I signed to go back to Germany. I was about to go play EuroLeague. And Sam Cassell called me, like, because I played for Sam Cassell two years before in some of the Mayor, what you doing? Yeah, what you doing? Mayor, uh, uh, Doc got me coaching the uh, Summer League team in uh, Vegas. I said, Sam, I already signed. I got guaranteed half a ticket in the bank, baby. I'm cool. cool. I'm out of here. It don't work. Nah, man, this could be a one. We're going to play this down. So I'm like, all right, whatever. It's an NBA out in my EuroLeague contract anyway. All right, cool, whatever. I go, and we out there in practice. And Q, when I tell you this is the first time I felt like, ah, maybe I shouldn't have made this decision. I'm going to cook, bro, in practice. Tariq Black, Kyle Wilsker, shooting that thing. Like, I feel like I'm a slow step. A step slow. Yeah. But I ain't tripping. All right. So they giving other people to nod before me. And I never forget Sam looking down the bench and Al Harrington. Shout out my boy Cheddar Cheese Al Harrington. Al Harrington taps Sam Casilla. Put Mill in the game, man. Sam looked down the bench. Mill. Rest was history. First game, I went six for seven, 18 points. In some of the never look next game, 18 points. The next game, 19, 8, and 8. That after that game, I met with the Clippers front office. Okay. Can I pause you? Can I pause you for a second? I don't mean to cut you off. All right. So I just want to see where your head at because you you had these workouts, right? Yeah. You get undrafted, yeah. you play G League, or yeah. was it D League at the time? Oh no, it was G League. G -League. G -League. It was D-League. It's the it G-League now. It was the D-League, baby. Yeah, it was D-League. <laughs> so you played in the D-League yeah. for two years. Two years. What's going through your head now? Like, man, is the NBA playing around with me, fam? Like, so I got that, a chance that, that's now? That's what it was. Like, I yeah. made the decision. I, I sat with my agent after the second year, and I made the decision, like, like, I've been here. You know what I'm saying? I've been under their radar. I've been a direct affiliate. I go to, that means I go to camp with these dudes, with this program, with this organization. They know me, I'm under them. They got all, whatever. You see me, you check in, this, that, whatever. And my agent was like, look, you can try it again or you can go make some real money. Me, I'm thinking I'm, what am I, 24 at the time, 25? I'm like, I'm finna go make some money, dog. You ain't finna catch me over here sweating for 30, 40 bands. Like, nah, bro, I'm finna go make some money. So I left. And then full circle, we come back. I'm in summer league and I'm meeting with the front office. And I'm like, I wanted to be arrogant, but that's not me. Obviously, I wanted to be confident in my ability and stuff. But the whole time I'm thinking like, y'all could have drafted me. Y'all could have whatever. All these teams that see me doing this now, I, it wasn't no different than what I was doing before. Because I still remember my agent called me my second year when I was with the uh, Frisco Legends, Texas Legends in Frisco. Dallas is traveling with seven guys now. A lot of dudes heard this down, whatever, go crazy. 27, 25, 29, 38, 31. I, I think I finished 28. This is on like a week and a half span, no call. No ring, no nothing. And when I did that, because one game, even one game, I think like I went like nine for 12 from three and they still didn't call. And I'm like, it, it was just one of those things like it ain't meant to be. And that, mm -hmm. that's just, 
at that point I signed and sealed. Like I tried for my NBA dream. It just wasn't meant to be. Cool. And then the next year I go to Italy and I'm killing over there. They calling up everybody. Like three dudes got called up from the team I just left in Texas. I'm like, what the, I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, dude. So then again, it reaffirmed what I said. It just wasn't meant to be. Maybe you're just supposed to be over here going crazy. You know what I'm saying? And there's nothing wrong with that. I try to tell young fellas now that like, bro, you can make a great life playing over there and coming back. Like you might not be able to buy six Bentleys, but you can get one for sure. Don't, don't get me wrong. Sure, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So, uh, so I'm like, all right, maybe it wasn't meant to be. So then obviously, like I said, full circle, we come back and I mean with the Clippers about signing a two-way contract. The coach <laughs> from Germany, from my EuroLeague team, flew to Vegas to meet with me, to talk about it. Like, I know this is your dream. And I know this is what you want to do and whatever you signed with us, you made a commitment to us. Obviously you have an out, all this other stuff. He was like, but what they're trying to give you, Andrea Cinciarini, Italian dude. He goes, what they're trying to give you is below your worth. Come play with me for a year. I'll get you guaranteed whatever. I'm thinking, all right, cool, you know, whatever, but it's not guaranteed that this year goes. Oh, what if I get hurt? What if I get oh. this down? Whatever. You know what I'm saying? You went out like, a little bit. It might be. Oh, might be. oh no, no, you good. But I was pretty much saying like, what if this year don't go well and something happens? I get hurt, this down, whatever. But my dream is right here in front of me. And I had already said good night and goodbye to this dream. And it, it's, it's here. So I took it, you know what I'm saying? I took it and that was that. But but I was for sure, when the, when the Clippers came back and whatever, my whole mindset was, it was like, I I belonged. It was like, finally somebody see like I belong. Like I'm, I'm not crazy for thinking that I belong on this floor playing with these dudes. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and it was just finally somebody else just seen it. And I was, I was grateful for it, but it was just like, I've been new this, you know what I'm saying? Like I've been new this, people around me been new this, now, you know what I'm saying? People have been telling me this. So it was just like a, a affirmation, like just someone just confirming what I already knew. Yeah, man, for sure. No doubt. And I've been new that since yeah, the first sure. day I met you at Purple. <laughs> and no, for real, bro. Yeah. You know, I'm from a different era, bro. I'm 6'3", and I was playing power forward and center. Right. And mm -hmm. when I first met you, that's when I started seeing the stretch bigs put mm -hmm. on the floor, like I was saying earlier. So you playing for the Clippers, I probably watched a good six of your games, dude. Mm -hmm. And you play good, good, great defense, great team player, right. high efficient shots. You know what I'm saying? So right. I feel like you, you deserve to be there, man. For sure. And, we, you know, we definitely not touching on the situation that happened, but when you, when you got, was it, was a waived or release? I got, I got, I got released. So you I got, released. yeah, mm -hmm. you, when you got, when you got released, man. Yeah. What's, what's going through your head now, Jay? Cause it's, it's like the NBA was like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? It, like, you know see, what I'm saying? When, like in and out. Released, I wasn't tripping. Like I got released because of money issue. I didn't get released because I couldn't hoop. I got released because it was a money issue. They had just signed Blake to a crazy contract. Gave Gallo a crazy contract. They gave Lou some money. Gave Pat some money. DJ had just got some money out. Like they ain't had no wiggle room to sign nobody. So basically they let me go, they released me. And they signed another game to a two-way contract. Cause now it's like, you can play up to 70 games and be on your two-way contract. When I first started, it was only 45 days you can be with the team. So you can be with the team a month and a half. And after that 45th day, they have to decide whether they're going to keep you on a regular roster or just send you back down to the D-League. And at that point, I was playing so well, it made no sense for me to go back down to the D-League. So I already knew, like, it was crazy because DJ told me, DeAndre Jordan told me, like one of the last couple of days I was there, he was like, bro, you might as well just pack your shit up and move down the hallway. I'm like, what you talking about? We was in Staples Center. 
He's like, yeah, bro, as soon as we let you go, the Lakers is gonna sign you, I already know. Like, it was already whatever. So I already knew. My agent had a jersey, before, when, still when I was with the Clippers, my agent had a jersey and everything. My agent was asking me like, yo, what jersey number you want with the Lakers? Like it was signed, still delivered. Like I was gone, I was Lake Show. But then obviously the incident happened with the young lady, which was completely left field and yeah. all out of whatever. And like I said, I mean, it's a touchy subject for some. And then a lot of people always ask me like, why you never released a statement about it or this, that, whatever because I felt like it was a gift and a, and a curse. Or the curse, obviously, it took my dream away but to play at that level. But it was a gift because I was surrounded by a lot of stuff and a lot of people that weren't good for me. You know what I'm saying? So with that happening, like everybody's like, oh, he's this or he got this or whatever, whatever. So they just kind of scattered. But the truth of the matter was, it was never true. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, I got the paperwork and whatever to prove it. But like, <laughs> I never, because I've never been that person to, I need to prove myself to somebody else. Exactly. Yeah. If you know, you know. If you don't know and you got an opinion, cool. Everybody entitled to it. I'm not. I'm not worried about you know what the next person is thinking or whatever. So, um, but no, that's what it was. So when I got released, I wasn't even tripping because I was playing so well. Oh, come on, man. You was playing. I, mean, I, was a, I was averaging like nine points, which is great. I was averaging like nine points, maybe like three or four rebounds, but I was playing limited minutes but I was shooting 44% from the trade. So I knew like somebody gonna pick me up. I don't know who, but yeah. somebody. So when I got released, I really wasn't tripping. Like, I'm like, all right, at some point, somebody's gonna pick me up. You go in and you do the exact same thing you did here. Prove yourself, whatever, this time, whatever, from day one, go in there, do what you do. Um, so when I got released, I wasn't tripping. I just knew it was a matter of time before I got signed. It just so happened that bullshit came out of whatever and derailed everything. But I, when I got released, I knew I was signing somewhere else. And when they, my agent finally told me like, yeah, the Lakers is gonna sign you. I'm like, it's lit. <laughs> Man, listen, check, check it. Check it how crazy it was about to be. So the new, it was right after the new year. My pop's birthday is January 10th, right? Mm -hmm. My first game with the Lakers was gonna be on January. 10th, my pops was turning 55. I picked number 55. It was gonna be crazy, man. That was gonna be dog. It was gonna be crazy. I still, I got the jersey and every, I still got the Laker, the yellow jersey with the official trimming and the, the NBA, the final, uh, the, the championship patch on the back. I got it all, dog. 55 was for my pops. And that was gonna be obviously, his birthday gift for me, like the jersey, my game worn jersey. You know what I'm saying? Like I had it all planned out, dog. It was so it was about to be cracking. But yeah, that that happened. But but nah, it, it was crazy, dog. I, yeah, no, I was super excited. Yeah, no, that would have been cold. No, that would have been real cold right there. Pops, pops, still proud of you. you know oh, saying? for sure, no, no question, no question, no question. A game worn jersey, though. My son? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, yeah. I want to see if I can find it, the picture of it. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> so, so the NBA doesn't work for you. And yeah. of course, we all know you go, you still playing professional now, you tear it right, up. Right, right. But I want to get into the TBT, man. Okay. <laughs> Come on, you wait. Want me to start, hold on. Do you want me to start with the championship? Whatever you, you want, want to start, start with, I'm man, here. You, like busting my bracket up, bro. <laughs> this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you want, dog. I'm here. Like when well, I get down with it. So, uh, what was it? 2018. I have this wrote down. Is that 2018? Y'all won. Uh huh. Yeah. That no, was 2020. 2020. Oh damn, 2020. Yeah. Oh, that was 2020. 2018. It's something happened to y'all. I forgot. Did y'all y'all fell short to somebody, right? 2019, we lost in Ohio State. We lost to Ohio State in Chicago. Okay, that's what it was. Okay, so 2020, y'all win, y'all win a TBT, bro. Won in the bubble. Uh, <laughs> so what they trying to say? This don't count. No, nah, the bubble was crazy. Bubble. <laughs> hey, listen, I know people make fun of the Lakers or whatever, but yo, the bubble is hard, bro. Bubble hard. You like. It was literally, they had gates around the hotel. Like you could leave and go outside, but it was like tables to sit around or whatever. But you couldn't go outside the gate. If you went outside the gate, you got disqualified. 
you. You couldn't leave. Like, you couldn't play no more. Like the team or the player? The player. Okay. Well, I was about to say. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you want to escort it outside the gate, when you're basically walking you to the gym and back, that, Whoa, that yeah, the bubble yeah. was hard, bro. Like, yeah. we... <laughs> the bubble was like a big sleepover for us, bro. We playing <laughs> video games two, three in the morning. We... You know what I'm saying? Days off and we don't have, we drinking beers and watching games and stuff. Like, it was a big ass sleepover, bro. But it's hard. Like, it, it really is hard. Because you ain't got nothing to feed off of. No crowd, no no negativity, no, no none of your people being there, nothing. Like, it's hard and you you just there. You ain't got no home cooked meals, no nothing, dog. You just, you ordering food every day. Like, you stuck. Like, you really stuck. And the moment you try to shake out of it, like there was certain parts of the hotel you couldn't go into. Like you couldn't go into certain parts of the, ho- the hotel was huge though. Certain parts of the hotel you couldn't go into. Or it was like a violation or whatever. Okay. Well, hey, listen, at least y'all, I would say y'all was more focused and locked in, right? For the game. Yeah, right? for sure. Because I mean, when you there and it's just this, you can't go nowhere else. You ain't got no choice but to be, all right, this is just this. This is the main thing. We're going to keep the main thing the main thing. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that made it easier in a sense, but it, that shit was hard, bro. We was, in, we was in there for what, two weeks, two and a, two and a half weeks, something like that? Like it's, Exactly. Yeah, so. Yeah, so y- y'all didn't bring the national championship home for Marquette. When sure. You were right. But. Right. Brought the TBT. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. How did that make you feel? I know you, you got to. Oh man, it, it was great. You know what I'm saying it was it was great. Yeah. Um, because I feel like again in college we fell short on a lot of things. You know, turning runs that should have went longer or this time whatever, or we weren't able to put things together. And even in the TBT the year before we fell short in the championship, and the year after, you know, what I'm saying we fell short the game to get the game to get to the championship, like. You know what I'm saying? So, like, to actually have one and bring it back is crazy. It's a crazy feeling. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of one of, it's like what I said, like, you immortalized. As long as this tournament go on, in 2020, you're going to see the name, the Golden Eagles, you're going to see the name Jamil Wilson. You're going to see Dwight Bice, Darius Johnson on them, like, Derek Wilson, Mo Acker. Like, that ain't going nowhere. Regard As long as this tournament go, like, you in there. And I, I, uh, I remember when we won, it's a picture of me. I, I hit the like the last shot because you know you gotta make a bucket. Mm-hmm. I hit the last shot and I'm you know holding the follow through and whatever. It's a tough ass picture. Bikes yelling, Trav yelling, or whatever. They storm me. And I wrote it with the the caption like like etch your name in history. That, that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? So um, but no, it was it was super dope, bro. Super, super dope. You know what I'm saying? And then the magnitude, how the tournament has grown. Like yeah, for sure. a lot of dudes is like big time dudes is in that now. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's, it's big time basketball. And I think the thing that makes it so special is the ending, how it is now. Like we're not playing against no clock. We, we're not up 10 and we just gonna waste possessions and do all that. Nah, brother. That make it tougher. You play into a score. It makes it tough, but then it brings like, it separates the real from the fake. Because when it's time to get to it, we know who gonna bring it home or who gonna fold and this, that, whatever. So, mm-hmm. uh, so yeah, no, it was uh, it was for sure a dope, dope experience. You know what I'm saying? Bringing that to the crib and obviously getting paid was <laughs> good. That was crazy to see. And it go little. right into your account right away. Right away. I got a text message from my bank. You have a Zelle payment of. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm looking at it like, I mean, I, at this point, I done played in the league. I done played overseas. This amount ain't never hit me. at one time. One over time. time, yeah, a couple months I get to. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But at once, I said, whoo. All right. I, all right, I can do this. Feel more of these. I can do this. I have to maybe get a couple more of these. Nah, but nah, it, it was dope, bro. It was dope. Man, no doubt, man. But um, yeah, man. I just wanna, I wanna. Oh, man, man. Well, before I yeah, get little man in here. But no, yeah. before I let you go, man. 
Yeah. Uh, TBT, y'all fell short this year. What's going on, little man? Say what it do. Oh, whatever. Yeah, we, I'm about to wrap up with that. Don't trip. <laughs> I'm about to wrap up with daddy. But yeah, y'all fall short in the TBT. I just want to ask, do you think y'all didn't have enough youth on the team? Or what you think? Uh, I don't think it was we didn't have enough youth. I, I mean, obviously youth is good and whatever, but the best thing in a tournament like that is experience. You know what I'm saying? And go on, get out of here, dude. Trip it. Go get your own smoothie. Uh, it's experience. And, and youth definitely helps because you're running into guys that are more athletic and fresh out of college and stuff like that. Uh, but nah, man, we, we, when we won it, we was old. Chad was 36, 38 when we won it. You know what I'm saying? So Yeah, yeah. So, but again, youth helps everything. You know, experience definitely. It, it, but it's trying to find that balance between experience, youth, and whatever. But I don't think youth was the reason we, we, we lost it. But it definitely would have helped us to have a few younger guys and stuff like that. It definitely could have helped. Oh, yeah, for sure. No doubt. Now, for real, for real, now, this is the last question before I let you go. If you uh, had... If you got any advice to give these young kids out here right now that just playing sports, man, what would that advice be, man? Fundamentals. Fundamentals and, and know the game. You know what I'm saying? Like, obviously now it's, it's, it's like a highlight driven, based, whatever. You get one highlight, one clip or whatever, and that's your, that's your ticket to whatever. And Dane kind of touched on it, <laughs> dunking it. Dame kind of touched on it at his camp. Like he was teaching the younger dudes like uh, what's going to work when your talent isn't enough and you really got to grind and earn your spot. Like stuff like that, you know, definitely the fundamentals and IQ of the game. Know the game, learn the game, know it from different positions. Be fundamentally sound with your left hand and your right hand. Be able to know what your go-to is and your counter and stuff like that. You know, I've learned so many things along the way, training, workouts with different teams and stuff. Um, but that that's probably one thing that, that sticks um, with me uh, because, oh, good shot. Because, uh, like, I, it's crazy that Draymond said it, actually. It's a lot of dudes in the NBA that don't know how to play basketball. You know what I'm saying? And that'll go over a lot of people here and a lot of people will get offended, but it's it's the truth of the matter. It's a yeah. lot of cats in the league that don't hoop, don't really, you know what I'm saying, know the game to a certain extent or the level, the level IQ that Dre is talking about, which is the truth. You know what I'm saying? And that's not a shot at anybody or anything like that, because I'm not bitter. I love my life, I love my career, how it's panned out. But if if it's one thing, is just be fundamentally sound, bro. Know how to go left. Know how to get your shot off going left, going right. Knowing what works for you and what doesn't. And the main thing is be a star in your role. Yeah, be a superstar in your role, bro. If you're not a 20-point scorer at night, cool. If you're a 10-point scorer at night, but you also getting 10 rebounds and three blocks, somebody is going to find use for that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to be the next whatever. You just gotta be you and be great at being you. And a lot of dudes see the high, like I said, you see the highlights, you see the clips of things and you wanna attain that or be that, but just be a superstar in yourself. Somebody gonna find you and find used to it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. sure. Yeah, but I appreciate that, man. And, and, the mo and what I appreciate the most is you, you know, coming to the Barcode Podcast. Yeah, hey, what it do? I can, you can bring me back anytime. Yes, yeah, sir. You already know you my dog, man, and sure. I appreciate it. Man, former NBA player. For sure. For the, uh, for the Clippers. Marquette alumni. For sure, for sure. Champion. You know, and top, top league overseas sure. professional, sure. man. My boy for Jamil sure. Wilson, man. Sure. I appreciate you, dog. I appreciate you having me, bro. It's always love, Q Bar. It's always love. Anytime, every time. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So you already know we're gonna we gonna uh, stay in contact and you might sure. have to give me some gear, man. They give you all gear like that, man. Let what me up? know, bro. Let me know. <laughs> Let me know. Okay, man. Appreciate you, dog. All right, my dog. All right. Peace. <laughs> 
Just touch down, back on road Counting money, man, you know how it goes Hit the VIP and tell my bitch to strike a pole Hop in mode, hop in mode How'd the uh, conditioning test go? Conditioning test was crazy. I, so, so I went, I think I ain't passed it the first two days. Cause I was, I was that new like stretch four kind of thing. So, you know, for every position they had a certain time you gotta make, you know what I'm saying? So I think guards had to do so many touches in three minutes. I think it was like 29. Okay. Bigs, it was like, depending on like weight and size, whatever it was like. I think 25 or 24, something like that. But then it was like that wing section and then they didn't call me a big or whatever. So I was in that wing side. I think it was like 28 or 27 touches in three minutes. So on a normal court, that's cool or whatever. But with that, yeah. you had that elevation to it. First two days, I didn't get it. And they kept telling me like, until you pass it, like it is what it is. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like you can't really be into anything anyway. And I remember Markeith Morris walking up to me like, look, bro, whatever you do, pass it today. However <laughs> you got to get yourself through, if you got to kill yourself to cross the line, do it. It was like the third day, I, and I think I, it was probably like 15 seconds left. And I was probably on like touch 20, I was about to get 25. So I had to get down and back in 15 seconds. And now you thinking like, that ain't shit. Yeah, but that's after running for two minutes and whatever straight elevation up, whatever. So uh, I ended up making it. Like I had to like jump, throw myself across the line and whatever. I ended up making it, but uh, nah, it, it was it was a beast, bro. Yeah, <laughs> it was a beast. yeah, yeah, it was a beast. It was a beast. See, that's why I stopped hooping uh, <laughs> in college, man. You know what I'm saying? It was, man, that's rough, dog. What's going See, on? Yeah, what's, what's going on? What it do? Say what's up. <laughs> Get out of here, man. <laughs> yeah, I told you, he's going to peek in at some time. I told you. Yeah, I'm like, hey, man, listen. You know, Q Bar, love the kids. I got two mm -hmm. boys myself. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah, but man, listen. <laughs> 